Here's part B of the question. You are asked to prove or disprove the following. f of n plus g of n is in big theta of the minimum of the two functions. The minimum of f of n and g of n. Once again, one can approach such problems using limits. We know that if, if a function t of n is in big theta of f of n, then the ratio of t of n to f of n as n tends to infinity will be some constant k greater than 0. Because if t of n is in theta of f of n, there must exist constants c1 and c2, both positive, such that for large enough n, t of n must be bounded from below by one of, the con one of these constant multiples of f of n and bounded from above by another constant multiple of f of n. t of n must be sandwiched between two constant multiples of f of n. In that case, the ratio of t of n to f of n must be sandwiched between these two positive constants c1 and c2 as n tends to, as n becomes very large. So, if t of n is theta of f of n, then the ratio of t of n to f of n must be some positive constant. Right, it's constrained to be a positive constant here. So, if f of n plus g of n is in theta of the minimum of these two functions, then it must be the case. So, assume that this is true. Then it must be the case that f of n plus g of n divided by the minimum of f of n and g of n. This ratio must be equal to some positive constant. But is that is that really the case? Is it is this always possible? Without loss of generality, let's assume that the minimum of f of n and g of n is going to be f of n. So f of n is the smaller of the two functions. In that case, this limit is going to be f of n plus g of n divided by f of n, which is 1 plus g of n by f of n. So it's this ratio between g of n and f of n which we need to examine. Is it going to be always true that the ratio of g of n to f of n is going to be some, some, some positive constant? Well, that's, that's, that's not, that's not always possible. That's not always going to be true because g of n and f of n are two independent functions. So f of n does not have to have the same rate of growth as g of n. f of n does not have to be, uh, g of n does not have to grow at the same rate as f of n. g of n could grow at a larger rate than f of n, assuming that g of n is greater than f of n without loss of generality, the exact forms at least. For example, f of n could be 3 n square, g of n could be 4 n square. In this case, f of n is smaller of the two, but they have the same rate of growth. So even though the minimum of g of n and f of, uh, of f and f of n is going to be f of n, the ratio of g of n to f of n as n tends to infinity is going to be 4 by 3. But what if g of n is 4 n cube and f of n is 3 n square? Now g of n has a larger rate of growth than f of n. So if you are adding two functions such that one of them has a larger rate of growth than the other, 
for large enough values of n, the contribution to the sum, the relative contribution to the sum of the smaller function is going to tend towards 0. So g of n by f of n here is going to is, is going to grow in an unbounded way. So the ratio is going to tend towards infinity for these for this particular example. So therefore this is not always true. It's not always true that f of n plus g of n is going to be theta of minimum of f of n and g of n. This will be true only if f of n and g of n have the same rate of growth as in 3n square and 4n square. Because in that case, the minimum of these two functions has the same rate of growth as the larger of these two functions, even though this function is minimum, is, is, is lower than, lesser in absolute value than this other function. But both are growing at the same rate. And it's only then that you can say f of n plus g of n which will also grow at the same rate as both of these individually. This will be in theta of the minimum of the two because the minimum of these two functions, which is f of n, is going to grow at the same rate as the sum of the two functions. But if g of n is, has a larger rate of growth than f of n, then f of n plus g of n is going to grow at the rate of g of n, whereas the minimum of f of n and g of n is going to be f of n. So a larger uh, a function growing at a larger rate cannot be theta of function growing at a smaller rate because the ratio of the two functions as limit tends to infinity, limit n tends to infinity is going to be infinite. That shouldn't have happened if they were growing at the same rate. If they were growing at the same rate, the ratio should have been some positive constant. And since it's not, since the ratio is infinity, we have actually prove we have actually disproven this claim and this is a counter example which disproves this general claim. The claim is true for some pairs of functions f of n and g of n. It's true for this pair for example but it's not true for this example where g of n has a larger rate of growth than f of n.